Uh, this is Dr. Neil Cross. Uh, I'm going to take you through the pre-lab activities for the Cellular Pathology Lab. So this is an outline of what you're going to do in the session. You're going to have a demonstration of tissue sectioning. That's powerfully embedded formalin fixed tissues. Um, you're going to be performing an immunohistochemistry on some uh, breast cancer cells, looking for the estrogen receptor. You'll be performing hematoxylin and deosin staining of some tissues. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but you're going to have to figure them out from a textbook. Um, you'll be analysing both the histology, which is your haematoxylin and eosin staining, and your immunohistochemistry by light microscopy. And then you'll be applying a grading system to assess the severity of a breast cancer. Uh, and this is the theory of this is what I'm going to take you through in this short video. In the lab you're going to be faced with uh, two different breast cancer samples. One which is called high grade, and one which is called low grade or it might even be normal and tumor grading relates to how severe a tumor looks down the microscope or in other words how undifferentiated it is or put it another way how much the tumor cells differ in appearance to normal cells of that particular tissue so just an example here's some colon uh, this is the lumen of the colon these are colon epithelial cells that line uh, the colon, mucus secreting, absorptive cells, that type of thing. When you start to develop tumours, these this normal cellular arrangement breaks down. This is a benign tumour of the colon, and you can see you've still got these finger-like projections here, but you've got glandular-like material down here. When this goes to full-blown cancer, you tend to lose any attempts to generate these finger-like projections, these villi, and you end up with just purely uh, glandular tissue. So we'll refer to cancers that are fully fledged cancers as either well differentiated or grade 1 or low grade, it means the same thing, and then we'll go through moderately differentiated which can be intermediate grade, grade 3 poorly differentiated, high grade, and in some grading systems we'll say grade 4 undifferentiated, anaplastic, the worst uh, prognosis, that's, uh, as in the most aggressive type of cancer. These cancers look absolutely nothing like the original cells from which they came, whereas a well-differentiated cancer superficially does look something like the original tissue from which it came, and that tends to give those patients a better prognosis. So this is just the generic grading system that seems to work for most cancers. Uh, breast cancer has its own grade, which is the Nottingham grade, and that's the one that you're going to go through in your lab. A tumour grade is really important. Um, from a pathologist's point of view and from an oncologist's point of view. If a cancer is high grade, then the patient needs more aggressive therapy. If the cancer is low grade, it might need a less aggressive therapy. And the tumour grade that you look at down the microscope for this particular patient uh, might be the difference between receiving chemotherapy after surgery and not receiving chemotherapy. Um, this is a what we call the kaplan my survival curve. It shows cumulative survival from diagnosis and this is actually for, for prostate cancer which uses a different grading system to uh, breast cancer and all other cancers. Without going into too much detail the maximum grade you can have with prostate cancer is a Gleason grade 10 the minimum you can have is a Gleason grade 2. Grade 2 and 3 are not even plotted on here because their survival would be sort of follow this trajectory very few people die of those very low grade cancers. What you can see here is if you are diagnosed with a grade 8 to 10 um, cancer, so Gleason grade 8 to 10, your five year survival um, would be about 60%. So we can get information like this. We would typically look at the um, time it takes for 50% of the patient cohort to die from their disease. So about seven years for Gleason grade 8 to 10 and about 13 years for um, Gleason grade 7, which is the most common grade to be diagnosed. Now all of this information from this grade is obtained purely by looking down the microscope at the tumour cells and looking at how they differ compared to normal prostate, looking for very specific features. We're going to be looking at uh, breast cancer, so I'm going to take you through breast histology. So that's a normal tissue arrangement of cells within the breast. So this is a low resolution uh, image of the breast stained with hematoxylin and eosin staining. The pale pink regions are your connective tissue 
I'll refer to them as mesenchyme, stroma, connective tissue, fibroblasts, that type of thing. The dark purple are your epithelial cells, and these are tubules of epithelium. Uh, epi the epithelium lines the tubules and then secretes proteins into those tubules. And what we are seeing is cross sections through individual tubules, and these all collect together into larger collecting ducts. At a high magnification, we can see that the epithelial region, so this region here has been expanded in this region here, and you can see that we have some secretory epithelial cells lining the duct, and they are secreting proteins into this lumen. Beneath there, we have some basal cells. They sit on a basement membrane, which is not really visible, but it separates off the epithelium from the mesenchyme or stroma. Around the ducts you may have periductal uh, fibroblasts. Uh, these may have smooth muscle characteristics to give some sort of degree of contractility around these ducts. And then, but then most of these cells within uh, this region here are just periductal fibroblasts or just fibroblasts. We'll, ju we'll just refer to them as connective tissue. This is a blood vessel. You can see red blood cells within there. So these are lined with endothelial cells and the red blood cells are visible. Other important features here are this, this wavy pattern, and this is just fibrils of collagen, and this has been laid down by the connective tissue cells. And what you can see is the mesenchyme, or stroma, is very cell sparse compared to the epithelium, which is very cell dense. Coupled with the epithelium staining up stronger for uh, both hematoxylin and eosin, it generally gives this impression that the epithelium is dark purple, islands of cells, and the connective tissue is pale pink with a few isolated cells within them. Also, the, the nuclei of the fibroblast tends to be much more compact compared to an epithelial cell. When we compare cancer to normal tissues, we can see a progressive breakdown of this normal tissue architecture as the cancers become more high grade. So here we have our normal breast, we have our epithelium, we have our mesenchyme or connective tissue. In our low-grade cancers, you can see that there are islands of cells, there's mesenchyme, but there are epithelial tumour cells with these large nuclei, and you can just see their prominent nucleolus. Those are infiltrating into the connective tissue, and that's because the basement membrane has broken down, and the tumour cells, the epithelial cells, have escaped out of the epithelial compartment into the connective tissue. Now, a really important thing about epithelial tissues is that the blood supply is in the connective tissue compartment, not in the epithelium. So if epithelium, epithelial cells are ever going to spread around the body via the blood or lymphatics, they have to be outside of the epithelial compartment, and that by definition is invasive cancer. As we move through to intermediate and high grade, you can see here the cells are trying to form ducts, uh, but there's very, very little stroma in between, and the ducts that are there are rammed full of tumour cells. If we go to the high grade cancer, it's just a mass of epithelium. I can't see any stroma in there, really, maybe these bits here. Um, all you've got there is a mass of tumor cells and blood vessels. So that would be a high grade cancer. When we do the Nottingham grading, we are looking to create a combined histological grade based on three features. These three features each have a score of one to three, and you add those up to get a score between three and nine and that will then give you a combined Nottingham grade of 1, 2 or 3 for low, intermediate and high grade. And the three things that we look at are the tubule formation, which is how well the epithelial cells form islands of cells surrounded by stroma. We then look at the mitotic cell count per high power field, that will be a times 40 on your microscope, and you will be looking to count 10 high power fields and if you can see 20 or more mitotic cells, then that would be a very highly mitotic or highly proliferative tumour, and that's a bad sign. Nuclear plimorphism is how variable the nucleus is. And earlier I pointed out the prominent nucleolus in some tumour cells, that's generally a bad sign. But if you've got small regular nuclei, then that's a good sign. If you've got variations such that one cell as a different nucleus to the cell next door, which is different to the cell next door to that, that is a very bad sign and we score that, we score that one three. So here's a very low grade tumour, 
all the epithelium that you can see is forming tubules. Um, you've got this weird swirling pattern going on that suggests there's lots of tissue remodeling. It's an incredibly low grade cancer. The nuclei of each adjacent cell looks pretty much the same. I can't see any mitotic cells on there, but there are cells here that look like they are epithelial cells within the stroma and here as well. But that is an incredibly low grade cancer and this may be very similar to what you see on the day. In contrast, this is a very high grade cancer. So you're going to get, be faced with two cancers, one that looks fairly normal, like the previous slide, one that looks very high grade. It might look a little bit like this. You can see the prominent nuclei, nucleoli. You can see that one cell looks very different to the cell next door. They just have very variable nuclei. So that would score three on uh, nuclear pleomorphism. For mitotic cells, we're going to be looking at uh, times 40 lens on your microscopes. Uh, we're going to be looking for cells which have got a line of chromosomes or chromosomes that have already started to separate after metaphase. So that's a nice uh, mitotic body. That's another one. That's another one. That looks like one that's tried to undergo mitosis but made a bit of a mess of it. So the higher the mito mitotic index, the more aggressive the cancer usually is. So this would if we saw this many on other replicate fields, this would be certainly scoring a 3 for mitosis. So using those three bits of information, tubular formation, mitotic bodies, nuclear pleomorphism, you should be able to apply a Nottingham grade to your two cancer samples. Now the other bit of the lab is staining some uh, breast cancer cells for the estrogen receptor. So as part of your pre-lab activities, you need to research what the estrogen receptor is, what the importance of it is to uh, breast cancer treatment uh, because this is one of the first things that we look for in trying to decide how aggressive a breast cancer is. Now this is a breast cancer stained up for the estrogen receptor. I'll be surprised if you get results as intense as this but all of this brown staining is epithelium with overexpression of the estrogen receptor and we're going to detect this with immunohistochemistry. Now when you do your pre-lab activities, I want you to research the vector stain ABC system. That's vector, V-E-C-T-A stain, because that's the system that you're going to be using. And try to understand the difference between primary antibody, secondary antibody, avidin, biotin, horseradish peroxidase, uh, DAB, which is the uh, substrate which goes brown, um, and what we want you to do is draw out an immunohistochemistry reaction um, pretty much as you are going to do in the lab. So if you need some more inspiration for that, look through your lab script and that will tell you all of the reagents that you're going to use. And um, we want you to draw out the immunohistochemistry reaction of you know, estrogen receptor, primary, secondary antibodies and all the detection system. So this is your uh, pre-lab list of things to do. Read the lab manual. You'll need that to know how to draw out your immunohistochemistry reaction because that tells you what reagents you're going to be using. So draw this label diagram demonstrating all the binding reactions. You'll be wanting to use terms like IgGFC, um, anti-IgGFC, the different animals that the antibodies are raised in. You want to label that up as well. Um, you want to investigate the role of estrogen receptor and also progesterone receptor expression in the diagnostic uh, process and therapeutic options for breast cancer. Because as you will find out when you do this research, the presence of estrogen receptor completely defines how these patients are treated. If they're ER positive, that's generally quite good and there's a very effective treatment for those patients. If it's estrogen receptor negative, the patients go down a completely different route, which will certainly involve chemotherapy, but might involve other treatments. So that's what you need to do for the lab. Uh, on the day of the lab, um, you will be covering everything from sectioning tissue, H&E staining of tissue, looking it down the microscope, having mounted your own slides, performing the full immunohistochemistry uh, reaction and then scoring that immunohistochemistry reaction. On top of that, you will be deciding which of those two cancers is very, very high grade and will certainly be requiring chemotherapy.